Former Prime Minister Bruce Golden is calling for a review of Senate appointments. His recommendation is that they should return to the pre-independence arrangement. Bruce Golden has said that there is a need for a review of the provisions regarding the appointment of senators and has suggested that there needs to be a return to the pre-independence arrangement, which allowed for appointments to the then Legislative Council to be revoked by the same process by which they were made. It is of immense significance that, prior to independence, the 1959 Constitution expressly provided that the appointment of a member of Legislative Council could be terminated on the advice of the person who had so nominated him. Provision was deliberately excluded from the 1962 Independence Constitution. The former Prime Minister's comments came in the wake of the problems that have been created in the Upper House last Friday when Peter Bunting was unable to be sworn in as an opposition member after it emerged that Norman Washington Horn's Senate nomination was still active and valid. Peter Bunting, who is a former member of Parliament for Manchester Central, was scheduled to be sworn in on Friday following an announcement last week Wednesday by the new president of the People's National Party, Mark Golden, that he had made a recommendation to Governor General Sir Patrick Allen to secure the appointment of Bunting to the eighth seat of the opposition Senate benches. It was also announced that Bunting would assume the role of leader of opposition business, taking over from Donna Scott Motley. It should be noted that Bunting, def defeated by the Jamaica Labour Party in the September 3rd parliamentary elections, ended up losing his seat in his constituency after being their member of parliament for four terms. Tom Tavares Finson had said that he could not proceed with the swearing-in process because there was no writ authorizing the move. He further went on to explain that uh, he was informed that he was to be sworn in today, but the writ that was expected from King's House did not arrive. He subsequently realized that Mr. Horn's writ was still in Parliament, so that writ would have to be withdrawn and then a new one prepared for Peter Bunting. In last October, Norman Washington Horn had mentioned that he would be foregoing the swearing-in process as senator after he along with seven other PNP members were recommended for the position of senators by the opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips. At that time, Horn said in a statement that being sworn in would be a great contradiction to his convictions. He said that he would have had to resign from the Senate on November 6th, the day prior to the PNP presidential elections, to allow the new opposition leader to appoint their own senators. I will therefore be communicating to the Governor General and the leader of the opposition my desire not to be sworn in at this time. The resignation was never submitted. Former Prime Minister Golden has argued that a person who has been appointed to the Senate, having received his instrument of appointment from the GG, but who subsequently declines to take up the seat, should be expected to submit his resignation forthwith to the head of state. He ought not to be able to withhold that resignation until particular demands have been met. These demands have nothing to do with the functions or business of the Senate, nor should he be allowed to take up his seat and behave like a rogue. That is not how the Constitution was intended to work. Statements coming from Norman Horn may have inflicted further wounds into the already damaged People's National Party. He has also issued harsh criticisms against those who have linked his letter to former General Secretary Julian Robinson regarding the $10 million that is owed to him to his comments about whether or not he would take up his Senate appointment. He also issued some harsh criticisms towards the party's new president, Mark Golden. He advised him that he needs to take a conciliatory approach as opposed to a dismissive and dictatorial approach to leadership. 
His release came one day after Peter Bunting was announced as Mark Golding's choice to fill the Senate seat. That Horn had indicated that he would intend to submit an official resignation about and withdrawal to the Governor General pending the PNP's November 7th presidential elections, but there was no submission. Many are of the opinion that the Senate should be about Jamaica and not the People's National Party. So for those who have been observing what is happening, the new president of the People's National Party nominated Peter Bunting to become the eighth opposition senator in the Jamaican parliament. However, Mr. Golden, like the great majority of the rest of us, clearly believed that a vacancy existed. This followed Norman Horn's statement in October that, rather than take up a Senate seat offered to him by outgoing PNP President Dr. Peter Phillips, he would be giving the new president a free hand to choose. Many persons would recall that on November 7th, Golden was victorious over Lisa Hanna in an internal delegates poll to take over the leadership of the PNP following Dr. Peter Phillips's resignation as party president and opposition leader. At his swearing-in ceremony, Mark Golden was sworn in as opposition leader on November 10th by the Governor General. Bunting's swearing-in sermon had to be thwarted because Mr. Horn had not formally withdrawn from his Senate position. Therefore, no vacancy exists. And this is a surprise and a conundrum for many persons. This is the case, although Mr. Horn was never sworn in and has not attended the Senate since the dawning of the new parliament after the September 3rd parliamentary elections. However, as it stands, there seems to be an absence of legal consensus as to whether Mr. Horn is or is not a senator. And there are a variety of views as to what needs to be done by the People's National Party's president and others, not least the Governor General, to rectify the situation and find a solution. Should Mr. Horn decline to formally say he does not want the Senate seat? It should be noted that there has been no statements coming from the PNP or Mark Golden as to what's to be done. Everyone is left to assume that consultations are ongoing with their legal experts. Questions remain unanswered. Did Mr. Golden and the PNP not know that Mr. Horn had not formally carried through on his promised intention, based on what he had said in the media in October? Given his background as a lawyer, successful businessman, and a former Minister of Justice, Mr. Golden and his team should have been checking and double-checking to ensure that Horn had submitted his resignation. And should King's House be blamed? We would have hoped that the Governor General's office would have informed all concerned about that vacancy or the lack thereof.